Ryan, would you like to introduce yourself? Maybe and uh, start the... I sure can. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, welcome team, my name's Ryan. Uh, I am a training manager uh, for a rail organization. Um, my side, side quest is data analytics or data science in general. Um, I've been on multiple book clubs for the last couple of years and have been very um, uh, thankful for all of the community uh, that makes up this entire uh, R4DS learning community. Uh, it's been great. Uh, don't hesitate to ask me any questions. Um, this particular book, Advanced R, is uh, uh, one that is uh, very much desired and I'm not familiar with it as I should be. So anyway. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Ryan. Um, someone else? Uh... I can go next. Um, so hi, everyone. My name is Brendan. Um, I'm currently a research assistant at a children's hospital here in Toronto, I'm studying psychology. Um, I'm an amateur R user, but a long time and passionate R user. And so I'm excited to join this club. Um, I'm not sure how consistently I'll be able to show up to all these meetings. It'll depend on when my other meetings are for work, but I'll try my best. Um, um, yeah. Thank you, Brandon. Um, anyone else? I'll go next. Hi, everyone. I'm Trevin Flickinger. I'm a data analyst here in Columbus, Ohio for a homeless advocacy organization. Um, I mainly uh, use Shiny, and I've been going through the advanced R book on my own, but I wanted to uh, join a more formalized uh, group and go with, you know, just learn, learn with you all as well. Thank you, Trevin. I guess I can jump in. Uh, hi, I'm Arthur. Uh, I work for an international organization in Washington, D.C. Um, I guess I'm kind of a beginning intermediate R user. I found myself using R Lang and a few other things relatively frequently uh, when doing so and encountering problems, finding my, my way back to advanced R. So I thought it'd be good if I sat down and actually read the whole book and better yet, uh, uh, read the book with, uh, with a group of learners. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Who's next? Uh, I'll, I'll go next. I, uh, my name is Lucas. I am a quality data analyst um, for a research consent center here in Florida. I've been working with her for quite a while now, um, but haven't been able to read the books as much as most people, I guess. I've read bits and pieces of it, but I've never really kind of, you know, formally read the book and finished all. So I'm hoping this time around we'll be able to read the entire book and finish it. Happy to be here. Thank you. I'll go. Hi, I'm Maria. I've been an R user for three years, four years. Um, I'm done with my grad school. I'm working part time right now looking for uh, jobs. Cool. Thanks. Thank you. So he said, uh, okay. Uh, he's from Toronto, civil engineer. I use R for infrastructure planning GIS uh, here in uh, um, uh, New Zealand. Uh, of the cut of the ring, uh, was not ready with a good computer uh, mic audio. Okay, that's 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 fine. So me left. That's me. Uh, my name is Federica Gazzelloni. I'm in uh, Italian. I'm in Italy <laughs> um, and uh, I'm a statistician, so quite, quite a few years of experience um, by, by both by training, by education. And uh, so. uh, I'm using R uh, for three years now, more or less, since the pandemic start, I, as, um, I've started looking at the uh, increasing number of uh, infections. Uh, so I'm towards data science, and uh, I'm grateful to be part of this community, which is very insightful, and uh, I learned a lot since I started joining this community. 
So I'm the facilitator of this uh, book club. So I'm just in charge for assuring that we each week will uh, be uh, a chapter to present. So unless we uh, agree differently. Um, so um, today we we just have a little introduction of the of the book and uh, then then you can uh, i don't know if any of you would like to uh, has already an idea uh, to be the next presenter of the second chapter uh, um, i don't know if you have already take part to uh, take taking part to other book clubs so all of you know uh, uh, how do to relate with uh, sign up as a presenter, uh, make the, making the notes, uh, updating the GitHub and everything. Do you have any questions about uh, this, uh, like uh, housekeeping procedures? No. So I suppose that, uh, everyone knows how to make the notes uh, because uh, uh, so the, how it works is that uh, each each week um, one of us presents a chapter and tell uh, uh, the other what what has and what is understood and if there's any questions and possibly through a presentation. Uh, so you can make a presentation. Um, uh, by forking the GitHub repository of this book club and then uh, um, filling up the the R markdown for for the the chapter that you are going to present so then you commit and push to to the main repository uh, and John will do the rest so you'll find your 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 notes in the the main uh, notes um, book down um, as a uh, for, for for the book club. Okay, I see that there is one more. There's a new joiner. Uh, hello, Bianca. Hi. Hi. We just did a little introduction of ourselves. Would you like to do uh, yours? Uh, okay. So. Uh, any specific thing everybody is talking about? Like, what, what do you want me to introduce? Oh, just about yourself. About yourself. Okay. A little introduction about yourself. Yeah. Okay, sure. Um, so, hi, everyone. I am Priyanka. Um, been part of the RPDS community for a while now. Um, I work as a data analyst. Um, at a medical devices company at the moment uh, in East Coast in US. Right now I'm traveling, so I'm in a different time zone. Um, what else? Um, I guess I love R and I try to learn from people. Uh, I think Mastering Shiny was my first book club, but um, we've been doing some others and I know Federica from many of them. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's so I'll obviously this is an open book club so if you are busy because we are all working and so we are doing this um uh, for for ourselves for learning uh, which is a, a very good way for learning things and uh, you can jump in even if the, the the session has already started you can if you can't attend a, a session you that, that that's not a problem we we may even be able to postpone the session if we all agree uh what else i don't know if you have any questions about the the how it works how the book club works maybe have you got any questions because we before we we go to uh to to the introduction of the book so federica one one question if i may um if i've got the right repo um for for the book club it looks like in for past cohorts, they'd committed uh, sharing in slides. It, it, will that be the case now, or, or will we be using book down as I've seen in other book clubs? I'm fine with either, just wanted to know what was expected. Thanks. Yeah, we, we are using book down. 
the, the, the structure of the, node, uh, the nodes have already been made. So you, you can see them on the GitHub, new GitHub repo for the, the book club. Um, if I can share the screen, I'll show you, um, this is my um, Slack. As you can see uh, on top here, there's, a, there's some links. So in the GitHub repos, there's a new GitHub and the old GitHub. So when you go here in the uh, new GitHub, it open up uh, uh, the, the repository, the new repository, so which is uh, empty, quite new. So we are the first cohort for this new uh, structure of the book club. And um, as you can see, the notes uh, which are here, uh now um it still i've pushed the the introduction that will be there uh very soon but this is the structure of the notes so as you can see they are in book down so then uh, you need to just uh, fork the repository and fill up uh, the notes for your uh, chapter then commit and push and then John will do the rest, who automatically will have the, um, the notes uh, with our uh, impression. Okay. So any other Thanks. questions? No? All right. Okay, uh, this is um, just a little introduction to give you an idea how, uh, how the, the, the book is structured. And um, uh, it's very interesting uh, uh, book because um, not, not only because it's advanced R and already the title tells uh, something interesting, but uh, it will help us improving our pro programming skills uh, with simple things, uh, just a little di directions and um, uh, stating few things that are to build up the foundations. So it's advanced because it actually lets you go in a bit more in deep about R. So um, we will go through a deep understanding of the language fundamentals and then understand what functional programming means. Because R is a functional language, so the use of functions and as well as combination of functions, uh, it's very important for you to, to do um, a nice investigation. So the, the, um, the author uh, suggests um, three books, which are, uh, have been very useful for him to uh, learn about programming and using R as well. So these are, you can find them on the internet, just Googling the, the names, and you find them uh, in the introduction of the chapter and then in the notes when they are up. So the structure and interpretation of computer programs 45, this um, six CP, and then concepts, techniques, and models of computer programming and the pragmatic programmer. So these three books basically help Hadley Wickham to uh, learn what he learned. All right, let's go forward and see that, uh, that this is the, we are going through the second edition. Um, the difference from the, the first edition is that uh, in the first edition, um, uh, the first edition was made uh, with base R functions um, almost exclusively. Uh, while in this version, um, so basically he expanded more with uh, other uh, R packages that have been developed within the years. So, and then the use of these new packages, as an example, uh, R lang um, 
uh, that uh, they add providing a clear interface to low level data structures and operations. So it's not only base ARM, a, a little uh, in, uh, interaction with other packages. This is from Twitter, from Hadley Twitter. And then, uh, okay, so this is the overview uh, of the book. And um, so basically, uh, it's, it's structured uh, within five sections, and the each section has some chapters. So it's composed of five sections, and um, it is a step by step uh, path towards mastering our techniques. The foundations, the first section is the part in which the R components will be examined. It will help understanding how to use all the basic tools to deal with function and structures. Then functional programming, once, once we have made the foundation, we go to fun functional programming. Uh, and it goes a little more in deep uh, into programming with R, making function of functions. Describing function factories and operators. Then the third section is object-oriented programming, this is OOP. Uh, which is a five chapter section all about object oriented programming layers and uh, sorry uh, oriented system and these systems are uh, there's many systems um, um, that can be used but uh, these three are the the most uh, uh, important one so in this order is3 r6 and s4 then we we will see what are they if you don't know maybe I mean. the the fourth section is metaprogramming and uh, this section introduces you through the programming layers so then we will see what's inside and then finally the techniques section which is dedicated to finding and fixing bugs and improving performance system so this uh, I think um, here this the, the, the third uh, uh, so far uh, for what I understood and looking at the uh, at the book, this third part is the the most uh, dense one. So let's say uh, and then uh, mm, if we go over this one, the other one would be you know the improving uh, coding and performances. Do you have any questions, maybe? Ryan. <laughs> I was going to uh, just make a statement above with the term set, uh, systems, um, the S3, S4, R6, et cetera. Um, just yesterday, we were uh, conducting a, a JavaScript book club. Um, Arthur uh, was in the same uh, meeting, but I was trying to express the layers, I guess, or stacks um, within the operating system, these different mechanisms of how these um, memory allocations are, are managed. And that's one of the, the real uh, tricks with advanced R is you're kind of almost getting under the hood of how the R language operates, uh, or, or even S language, if you want to even go that far uh, to extent. Um, I, I, there's some familiarity I have with searching this document, but I don't want to bring any of that just up. I was just going to add in to the to the comment about object oriented programming in general um, and, and how the R language uh, process operates under the hood. Thank you. Okay, uh, there's something in the chat say from, from CRAM, I don't know if I pronounce well. So I think the only question is about copyright issues. Uh, yeah, somehow, uh, but you mentioned the, the, the source of your uh, things and that would be fine. So anything if you take pictures, if you mention other books or uh, if you bring new data or 
I don't know. It, this is a companion of the advanced R, so we're supposed to mention the book. Uh, it's made for for students to that are working on the on the book. So we obviously mention the same things uh, that are in the book. Uh, if we mention other books or other sources, we just mention the sources and give the credits to to the. Where we, where we take the thing. Okay, so just uh, um, a little bit more in deep about um, uh, what's inside these this sections. So inside the first one, which is, is the foundations, uh, we have um, control flow, function and environment, and then names and values, vector and subsetting. So these two uh, branches, once we have done uh, the first one, we jump to the second one, and then we blend everything within conditions. This is how I, uh, I think it should, it should work somehow. So uh, the, the, the last chapter, the, the condition describes error, warnings, and messages. So once we uh, reach the environment, uh, we have made some function, we did some control flows and everything. So we're supposed to, to know all the little blocks that. Um, for, for building up the environment, we go to conditions for checking and debugging somehow something. So there are six chapters for as a foundation. I don't know if any of you would like to do the, the second chapter. If we want to do more than a chapter, I, I'm not sure about that. Not, mm, have you got an idea? What would you like to do if you want to do like two sessions for a, for a chapter or um, two chapter in one session or just one session per, per, per chapter? What do you think it would be? Oh, I've got something in the chat. Uh, citation giving credit back to the source. Please comment. Okay. Um, what would you like to do? One session for 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 a chapter? Yeah, I think we can do one session per chapter, and then depending on how you know big the chapter is, we can. We can make a decision accordingly and split them up depending on the size of the chapter bed. One session per chapter sounds like yeah. you know, a good way to go, probably. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any of you would like to do names and values? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe next week. Okay. Let's think about that. Okay, let, let's go forward. Um, yeah, one, one, one is it's fine. Yeah, I, I agree totally. Okay, the, the second section is functional programming. And this part of the book is dedicated to functions. And this is the part I really uh, look forward to because um, I'm interested in function factories. And it talks about functions function factories and operators and gives you some uh, um, names to, to learn, which they would be very interesting. So we go through functionals and then function factories and function operators. The third, yeah. 
Okay. The, the third uh, um, part of the book is OOP, so Object Oriented Programming, and this is the most dense part of the book. Uh, it mentions about systems which interact with R. Uh, so such as R6, this is the uh, the one that I, I know a bit. And then there is S4 and S3. So we go to the base types and then uh, um, we have a look at these three uh, systems and then we learn about the trade-off. So how to relate with R and these systems. Then the, the fourth section is metaprogramming. So this helps us to figure out about the, the big picture. So uh, this is the part where things are blended to the big picture. R is a versatile uh, functional language that can be managed and assembled. So we have a look at the big picture and then uh, we try to, so we make uh, evaluation, quasi quotation and expression. And then we translate this big picture into an R code. So this metaprogramming, it sounds like interesting as well. Then any questions maybe? Any ideas, any uh, comments, statements? No? Okay, so finally, the, the last uh, part is techniques. And this is the last section of the book where debugging is used to measure and improve performance and how to improve performance by rewriting K function in C++. So this, uh, uh, it's very interesting. So the last, last chapter basically guides you to um, shifting between R and C++ because uh, R sometimes is not very fast. So maybe be able to interact with C++ and translate the code and in C++ will uh, in some condition, under some condition, you can make something that works uh, faster using C++ passing through R. So this last section is basically on debugging and measuring performance of your code, improving performance, and then in case it's needed, be able to uh, see what will be in C++ or how can be done in C++. This is the, the structure of the book, uh, and uh, it is, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, there is a, even um, a book with solutions, advanced solutions. So maybe we can have a look at this. Uh, in case there's any interesting exercises that we want to go through. This is the old one. And um, instead of this, uh, where is it? Instead of the second edition, this is the first edition. So it's quite different. There's a table of content. This is the first edition because, um, as I mentioned, uh, this the first edition is made mainly made in R, just base R, so it's not interacting in any extra packages. Uh, so you might want to go back and refer to the first uh, in the first uh, edition if you want to see how to make that code in base R. While if you go for some, some chapter, uh, slightly change it. Uh, when you choose a section, then uh, you can see how it is in the new, uh, in the second edition. So it leads you automatically uh, to the second edition. And um, I don't know, I think uh, it's all for me.
I don't know if you have any ideas, comments, questions, uh, statements, uh, and you are. Um, say you want to present the second chapter, maybe. <laughs> I'll, I'll take the second chapter. Excellent. Do I um, need to put my name somewhere? Yeah, in, in the Slack here. Okay. In the Slack on top of the, the Slack, there's a, a link uh, with a Google sheet where you can uh, sign up with your name as a presenter. All right, got it. Thank you. <laughs> all right. So, um, so we are all all set. I don't know if you. Um, I have a somewhat, maybe not. Uh, like let's just call it off off topic question um does anyone know if if uh there's a new edition of advanced r that might be in the works because i i know r lang for example has changed a lot in the past few years i don't know if the general approach has changed or just kind of the syntax i was wondering if anyone kind of knew if, if there's like a collection of um documents like related to this book that's uh, either uh, a draft of uh, of a new edition or that might kind of help us as we're reading through Arthur, if I could add, I, I don't know of any direct citation or direct location, direct site to navigate to, but that's a great question if anybody does find anything. Um, I was going to key in a lot of the times when you're on the online version of the book, uh, not print, but actual online, uh, they haven't released or updated the newer version just yet. And so sometimes you'll notice uh, the authors will post kind of these breadcrumbs of, hey, put more content here or change this, you know, some other uh, uh, set called when you're making notes to yourself. Uh, I always find that those are most critical because it was it is going to update eventually. Um, John, when he's presenting, often gives some context around those breadcrumbs. And I think they there is a site that does provide more guidance in the future paths of where the book clubs are going or where the, the books are going anyway. Uh, the authors are taking the subject. Um, I'll try to do some research for you, Arthur, and see if I can post anything to our, our uh, channel. Great question. Thanks, Ryan. Anyone else? I, I have seen this uh, Lang as mentioned at the beginning of the book and then um, going through the, the chapters, I've seen that other packages have been used. But I can say I'm not sure about it. The first thing that comes to mind are release notes as our studio updates or, or any of the uh, drama that often goes with breaking your system or upgrading to a newer version and uh, uh, forming backwards compatibility. That's often the best place uh, to find those type of news channel type RSS feed updates uh, within the community. Federica, I was going to also add, uh, there was a comment, um, I think it was from Lucas, it may have been Arthur, Arthur uh, asking about format of presentation. Um, I don't think there's anything that defines what form of presentation media to go after. Uh, so whatever slide deck, whatever form that you're most comfortable yeah. with, I think is acceptable to the group. Um, I would only comment that if you're in some form of a PowerPoint or Google Slides or something of that nature, uh, it may be difficult for code blocks uh, or um, being able to share it, especially from a source control standpoint. Um, you can't upload PowerPoint. Um, it may have some weird effects if you do. 
Yeah, yeah, of course you can use anything you uh, you think is more, uh, so it's for you more, more comfortable um, for you to use. Uh, it, it's just that it is so easy because uh, if you go on GitHub and uh, fork the repository and then uh, uh, you made a new project in your R, any one of you would like to see the procedure maybe. So it, it, once, once you have made a new project uh, with the, the fork that you have uh, on the GitHub repo, you have all structured. So you just need to add things inside the R markdown which are already there. So you just need to change the thing inside markdown. So the, this is the reason for me, I think it's straightforward doing like that. But in case you can use whatever you want, you like, you think is more comfortable for you, not a problem at all. Well, since we still have a little bit of time, I mean, do you mind maybe um, putting a demo um, quickly on yeah, how sure. to prepare those slides? Um, yeah, it, it, it's very uh, simple and straightforward. So, um, for example, no. I uh, have this, uh, I close these things, otherwise make confusion. So this is the uh, main repository. Okay, and you can ask, access this from Slack or on the link on top. You say new uh, GitHub and it leads you here. So this is the, uh, the repository. Then what you need to do is to fork the repository. So you actually click on here. Uh, so I've already done it. So he said, create a new fork. You say yes, and it made uh, this new fork. When you go into your fork, you have your username and the fork of the book. So the same things that you have in the main repository, you have it in your fork, okay? So then what you have to do is going to R, Okay, and um, I close this project. You're going to R and say, uh, make new project. Okay, and then version control, GitHub, and then here you, uh, Copy, uh, copy your fork, so this one here, copy and paste here in the URL for, um, maybe it's not that. This one here. You copy and paste this, and then you highlight this and copy and automatically position the, the project director name here. Then you select the position of your project. Uh, I say uh, that this one is two because I've already that in my, uh, in my R. So and you just click create a project. He clone all, all the, the things inside the, uh, the GitHub repo. And then you, uh, can you all see? Um, yes? Yeah, can see? yeah, you can see it. Yeah. Can see it. So you have the list of all chapters. Now uh, they are a bit um, changed. So I have added the, the names of the chapters. But this is the structure which is uh, already made. So you go, for example, on chapter two, and I, as you can see, um, it's 
the structure is already made so you need to uh, like cancel these things and adding your things and then change uh, the titles and everything then you need it for example so when you need it uh, this chapter two has changed as i made a modification this is the the book down with the notes and it is empty at the moment so once you have done this and you like your changes so you need it and you like it and you're all set then you go here on top of this uh, uh, tabs and as you can see there is jit so there you have yeah there's any questions so there uh, you have the things that you have modified uh, yeah no no you're good yeah. no, you're good uh, so you click on the things that you want to commit so make the changes then you commit oh i forgot something very important forgot okay before doing this you need to make a new branch okay so i forgot to say that you need to make a new branch because otherwise uh, uh, you are making changes on the main branch so you create chapter two branch in so that you have create uh, a new branch so it switch automatically to a new branch okay so you are in chapter two and you still have all the modification that you made now you commit you select the things that you have modified you commit it and you can see what are the changes you accept you agree with this you say something like chapter two uh, and then commit and then push once you did that all the things that you made will go into the main repository and you'll see a green band here uh, say that you can uh, you want to these things to go through and then john will see the the pr so the push that you have made from from your r and uh, will he will uh, uh, check the thing and then uh, uh, so update the notes what else i can say about this it's very simple and straightforward just um you need to fork and make a new pro project and it's all done yeah have you got any questions um, no thank you that, thank that was you. lovely um it, it does look like it's straightforward somebody mentioned uh, the the read me has instructions um of how to do that as well using the use this package so probably i'll, I'll, I'll use that all right a anything uh any problems you can just ask on slack and everything you find a way to uh yeah around it. yeah all right so we are set <laughs> Someone else would like to add uh, something? Moira, Moira, how, how do you pronounce your name? Hi. Moria. Moria, hi. Hi. Thank you. Um, this, is, this is kind of my summer project. <laughs> <laughs> Going through this, how often do you meet? This cohort? How often does this cohort meet? Once a week. Once a week. Okay, that's good. Holding the yeah. me accountable. <laughs> then we agree to do if if we want to. Uh, I don't know when how to do the things that we we do together. So mm. yeah, all learning. I I'm I'm not personally. 
I'm not an expert for this advanced R, so I'm very curious to to see what I can uh, grab from the from this book. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Likewise, I'm I'm trying to <laughs> clean up my portfolio a little bit. I, I've been getting a lot of rejections, so hopefully it'll add up to something better. Maury, I was curious with uh, with the resume process, are you doing anything with R or building any of your resume uh, using Markdown or, or uh, GitHub, uh, GitLab, any of the version control services at all? No, I haven't. I've seen some templates um, because I couldn't understand what the template um, is doing. So I'm a little bit iffy about like how to proceed with that. But I've heard that is a good tips too. Um, yeah. It would be much easier, especially if you have uh, side projects or, or, you know, work history, anything that you've developed, uh, having that code posted so others can go look at your um, links. It's easier to pass a link to somebody than it would be to upload an entire document, uh, especially with formatting and, and any funny nuance that occurs with with uh, the uploading process. Uh, I've, I've had some really horrific uh, rendering of, of uploading a Word document PDF and it just completely butchering everything that uh, was uh, compiled originally. So can you tell me more about that? So you would um, add the code onto your GitHub? Well, so like you would have an R project, right? Let's just say hypothetically you have an R project and it's dedicated to your resume. Well, it would be authored and developed in Markdown syntax, but all of your links that you would be providing are just navigating users uh, to another uh, GitHub repo, GitLab repo, Bitbucket, whatever version you're using. And then they could go look at your source code for some analytic project. Um, i use Tidy Tuesday as a really good example or a use case in developing your skills or showing your skills. Um, Frederica could probably expand a little bit more on the Tidy Tuesday process, but usually we get a weekly data set on Monday night, Tuesday morning. You work through that over a particular week and then you post to Twitter or social media, whatever your choice is of what findings you had. And then here's a repo that others can go look at your code as well. And it, it it's a checks and balances. And I guess it really highlights the, the learning community as a whole. The Tidy Tuesday project is part of this R4DS learning community. Yeah, and I'll just add to what Ryan is saying. I have uh, yeah. done that too, um, but in a different way. So I can probably share a link later um, and see if that helps you work on your, your own um, stuff. We, we can't hear you, but I can't hear you probably. Uh, it's like there is a line disturbed, maybe. Okay. I can't hear you probably. But anyway, so uh, we are done, uh, all set for this, uh, this week, this introduction. We need another one for chapter three. So think about... <laughs> uh, uh, who would like to do chapter three and uh, we'll see you next week yeah absolutely thank you thank you Bye. thank you everyone Bye. Bye, guys. Bye.